Good evening, and welcome to the 35th anniversary of the National Coalition Against Censorship's Night of Comedy with Judy Bloom and Friends. Tonight's MC, stand-up comedian, actress, and two-time Emmy Award winner, Judy Gold. Thank you so much. How is everyone doing? Did you enjoy your hen? Your hen or your salmon? Hen. When they said hen, I was, I was like, oh, Cornish hen. Okay, that's fine. Um, all right, and the wine, I have to say, very delicious. You didn't really have to wear a tuxedo tonight, but I hope you feel good about yourself. Anyway, um, I, oh God, I'm kidding. You look great, you look fantastic, but I think you're at the wrong place. Anyway, um, I am very, on, I have to say, this is such a thrill for me tonight. Um, now, Judy Bloom and I have a lot more in common than just sharing the same first name. Uh, I do actually spell my name J-E-W-D-Y. <laughs> Judy. Um, but like Judy Bloom, I also lived in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yes, I lived in Pierce Manor uh, until I was in first grade. Um, and growing up in suburban New Jersey, also known as hell, the books I read were all written by Judy Bloom, and she wrote the Jewish equivalent of those Goyesha Little House on the Prairie books that everyone else read. <laughs> which were so goddamn annoying and full of shit, but um, thank God for Judy. And when I did my show, 25 Questions for a Jewish Mother, my favorite opening night gift was from our director, and it was a signed copy of Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. So, this is means so much to me. Now, because Judy's books dealt with such taboo topics, I learned about everything that my mother decided that we were never gonna talk about. See, my mother actually created the don't ask, don't tell policy before Bill Clinton. <laughs> so, don't ask me about Judy's personal life, I will not discuss Judy's personal life, but Judy Bloom is an unbelievable hero to all the girls of my generation who in no way could discuss divorce, religion, masturbation, menstruation, anything with their parents. And if only Judy had just written one book about a tall Jewish girl who had crushes on other little girls, then perhaps I would have saved a lot of money in therapy, but I'm gonna be collaborating with her on that. So, one person thinks it's funny, and here's the deal. When I make one person laugh, that's all that I really care about, okay? I don't give a shit about the rest of you. So I am saying this for the millions of kids who grew up in the 70s and beyond, and for my children who now read Judy Bloom's books. Thank you, Judy Bloom. <laughs> now, we have a very special evening prepared for you tonight, and uh, there will be some readings from Judy's books. People read short excerpts or lines from letters that Judy has received. And whether it's from kids or concerned adults, I want to say that all of these anecdotes and all of these letters are completely real. They are not made up. These are real letters that Judy got. Judy got. Um, and to begin tonight's uh, festivities, I want to welcome a man who knows all about censorship as chairman and CEO of the Motion Picture Association of America, the chair of this evening's event, a Jew from Kansas City. Uh, well, he's from Kansas, from Wichita. Who the fuck knew there were Jews in Wichita? <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Kleckman! Thank you uh, for that very subtle introduction. Uh, <laughs> I am from Kansas, and actually, Little House on the Prairie was the most exotic book I ever read growing up. Uh, but uh, now I'm in a different job, and I'm a lot more sophisticated. I want to thank you all for coming out and for uh, contributing to a cause which is really important to us in America, and that's to preserve our First Amendment rights so that we can read and see what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I want to introduce uh, our honorary chairs, uh, Chip Gibson from Random House Children's Books. Where is Chip uh, somewhere? Raise your hand, okay. Uh, Caroline Hirsch, if Caroline's on Broadway, I've got to go there. I know she's over here someplace. Michael Peach. Michael Peach of the Shet Book Group and Little Brown. Michael. 
and the best is for last. Uh, there's a woman here named Jane Friedman, and Jane Friedman, wait, 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 wait. Jane Friedman's son, Stefan, is married to my daughter, Amy. So that's how I got here tonight. And Amy is pregnant and was due, I think, three months ago looking at her, so we're going to have to get home as fast as we can tonight. Uh, let me just uh, say a couple things. I know that a lot of people are here in publishing, but the film industry has had its own issues with censorship for many years. Some of you may remember the Hayes Code. That governed movies for years, where only correct standards of life could be used. For example, if married couples were in bed, each had to keep a foot on the floor. Uh, no scenes of childbirth. No suggestive dancing. No lustful kissing, whatever that meant. And then, with the movie Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in the late 1960s, a long debate occurred with all the studio executives over the word screw, and it wasn't a tool to be used in carpentry they were talking about. And this was outside of the home improvement context, but that led to the replacement by the term hump the hostess. You may remember that Richard Burton, and that took weeks to try to get away from the center. So my predecessor, Jack Valenti, knew, he called this the odious smell of censorship, and he felt that the long list of have-nots had to go, and out of that grew the motion picture rating system, which we've lived with for almost uh, 45 years now. It's been very successful at keeping the censors at bay and giving parents the information they need to decide whether a movie is appropriate or not for their kids. Now, uh, I want to move on to a Judy Bloom related reading because it's obvious that I was never a teenage girl, but my daughter was, Amy. And she told me that I had to read this scene from Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And I brought it with me, and Judy autographed it to my daughter, Amy, who wrote, uh, Lo Love, Judy, Have a Great New Reader, which I think was a very nice thing to say. So, but there is a participatory part for you at this, in this routine. So at the right moment, I'd like you all to follow my lead. OK, so here's the reading, and I'll start. After school, we went straight to Nancy's for a meeting of our new club, the Preteen Sensations. Let's, well, let's get to it, Nancy said. First of all, we have to feel each other's backs to make sure that we're wearing bras. We all were. What size did you get, Janie? Gretchen asked. I got a grow bra, Janie said. Me too, I said. Me too, Gretchen laughed. Not me, Nancy said proudly. Mine's a 32 double A. And we were all impressed. If you ever want to get out of those baby bras, you have to exercise, she told us. What kind of exercise, Gretchen asked. Like this, Nancy said. I must, I must, I must increase my bust. She said it over and over, and we copied her movements and chanted with her. So I want the house lights up, and I want everybody together twice to say, we must, we must, we must increase our bust. We must, we must, we must increase our busts. Okay. So, so Nancy said, good, do it 35 times a day, and I'll promise you, you'll see the results. Thank you all very much.